What's up guys, Rogue9 here and welcome back to my series on Rainbow Six Siege. This will be my final episode based on the content that was available during the closed beta. We've discussed the consulate, we've discussed the house level. Time for the Hereford Killing House. Show me the map. Considering the size of the target building itself, you can see that the staging areas to the west, north and east are quite large and all of them offer elevated positions for snipers to get into place and target the building. The spawn positions in these areas are the training center, the parking lot and the shooting range. And as always, before we take a closer look at the target building, here are the key symbols you will be seeing. Any walls, doors or windows in red are fully breachable and any walls or windows in white are completely non-breachable. CCTV cameras will be marked on the map using blue squares in yellow borders. Ceiling breach points are marked in red empty squares while floor breach points are marked in squares with a red and blue fill. And finally ammo crates are simply yellow boxes. And with that we're almost ready to actually enter the building. One last point I'd like to make before we do so is I would like to highlight to you the position of two outdoor CCTV cameras. These cameras can be used by the defending teams to observe and even mark attacking players. So it's important for players on the attacking team to know where these cameras are and to be able to take them out as soon as possible. As you can see one of the cameras is in the southwest of the map and can observe the western and southern approaches to the building, while the other is in the northeast and it can observe both the approach from the north and from the parking lot in the east. And with that, let's dive in and check out the third floor of the building. As you can see, this floor can be quite a challenge to defend. A balcony in the north provides attackers with a platform from which to launch their attack on, including hard cover. To enter this floor, attackers can use any of the nine breachable windows, highlighted using small yellow circles, or one of the two doors highlighted by large circles. Although I would like to point out at this stage that the southern door is actually halfway in between the second and the third floor since it's halfway down the stairs. If you don't like doors or windows, why not breach through the walls? You have an option in the north and one in the west. If you prefer the stairs, you can take the internal stairs up from the second floor or you can take the external stairs in the east. The security camera on this floor can be found here and it will cover the entire hallway to the east and south including the top of the stairs. If you've been a busy little operator and you've put loads of holes in stuff you can replenish your ammo in the storage room. But enough of theory, time to show you what this place looks like in the game. So and here we are on the third floor balcony outside the hallway. As you can see we have the option of breaching in through the window to the left which leads to the hallway, this chipboard wall again leading to the hallway, or the window on the right which will lead you to the ballistic mat depot. Everyone ready? Fine, let's go! As you can see the wall leading to the workshop straight ahead of us is almost entirely chipboard. This can be especially dangerous when there's a defender marking you with the camera, which incidentally is right above my head now as you can see. From here, defenders can see down both directions of the hallway. As you can see on the minimap, the wall to my right is almost exclusively solid. There's only a small section of breachable wall just south of the doorway leading into the storage room. But before we move down there, let's take a quick look at the ballistic mat depot. As we breach into this fairly small room, please observe the fully breachable wall to the south, as well as breachable windows and walls to the north and west. The eastern wall shared with the hallway is very solid and in the center of the room just there you can also see ballistic mats stacked up which will also provide solid cover. Here's a quick view from the other side of the room and now let's move down to the storage area. From the outside this room can be breached through windows on the western and southern wall. From the inside you have breachable walls to the north and the east. Some solid cover and ammunition are also provided. The final two rooms on the third floor that we haven't looked at yet are the workshop and the dummy depot. As you can see right here, the workshop is one of the largest rooms on the top floor and it provides a lot of cover. But while there is a lot of cover within the room, the walls to the north, west and south are almost fully breachable. 
This can make you vulnerable to enemies shooting at you from almost any direction outside of the room. The dummy depot is fairly small with limited cover and from the outside it can be breached through windows from the east and south. And before we head down to the second floor there's one last little trick I wanted to show you up here. From the workshop you can smash a small hole through the wall in the south giving you access to the staircase. A murder hole in this position allows you to cover the stairs but as you can see from the blood on the wall it does make you vulnerable to return fire. And with that, it's time to head down to the second floor. Let's take a look at the map. The second floor, as you can see, is considerably larger than the third floor and is distinguished by a corridor that runs down the centre to the master bedroom flanked by solid walls both on the right and left, while the rooms on either side are mostly connected by fully breachable walls running east to west. From the outside, this floor can be breached through any of the seven windows or two doors and again I want to highlight that the southern door is actually halfway in between floor 2 and 3. Or you can smash your way through the breachable wall above the garage to the west. As before you have both an internal and external staircase leading up and down and you also have a ladder that leads to a small platform outside the southern doorway. The defensive camera on this floor can be found here overlooking the corridor and part of the master bedroom and ammunition can be found on a shelf in the master bedroom. From the second floor, you can access the first floor through floor breach points, one in the kids' bedroom and one in the office. And with that, come, let me show you around. And here we are, coming down the southern stairwell. Notice the open door behind us with a small platform outside. As mentioned before, you can reach this using the conveniently attached ladder. To our right now, you may notice the luxurious kids' bedroom. With a fully breachable wall to the north and a breachable window to the south, this room provides a great play space for your child, as long as it doesn't mind sleeping on sandbags. Heading back out into the hallway, we now find ourselves beneath the CCTV camera. The default view of this camera is down towards the staircase, but you should also be able to rotate it back towards the master bedroom. At the height of modern living, this room acts as a hub room and we'll come back to it in a second. The minimalist style bathroom has breachable walls both to the north and south and a window facing east. The classic cast iron bath in the centre can protect against bullets. Heading past the ammo crate we now go to the laundry room. In case of unwelcome guests, apply bullets lavishly. Similar to the master bedroom that we find ourselves in now, the laundry room also has a bulletproof wall running down it from north to south. Outfitted with state-of-the-art 1980s home washing machines, this room has a doorway that leads out to the east and a window heading to the north. Before we move on, let's take a quick rat's eye view of the master bedroom. Notice the breachable corner of wall in the southwest and the window to the north. And heading further to the west, we have a small single windowed TV room with what is possibly the worst panic room in the world just adjacent to the south. But now let's head back to the real world. The real game world. Last up on our tour is the spacious office. Notice the windows in the southwest and south and breachable walls in the north. To get through here though I would suggest either bringing the correct equipment or a lot of patience. The office does come with an emergency escape hatch to the first floor but before we check that out let's have a look at the map. As with the second floor the first floor is characterized by a long solid walled corridor running from north to south. Entry to the first floor from the outside is quite limited. There are only three windows and one door. Furthermore, you have two breachable walls, one in the dining room and one in the garage. If you're already inside the building, you can use the southern stairs to come up from the basement or come down from the second floor. And there is also a ladder leading from the basement up to the garage. Last but not least, you can always drop in from the ceiling. The hatch in the floor of the office leads down to the kitchen and the one in the kids' bedroom leads to the dining room. If you're running low on ammo, check the kitchen and watch out for the CCTV camera in the hallway. And finally, if you want to make your way down to the basement with a bang, look to the floor panel in the kitchen or in the TV room. And if you'll be so kind as to follow me this way, let's take the tour. As you can see, we're still in the office on the second floor. Let's make ourselves a shortcut down into the kitchen. What do you mean, standing too close? Hit it, come on! Ouch. Why didn't you tell me to get back a bit, dude? 
Here we have the industrial sized kitchen, reachable walls to the north and west, can give you easy access to this room if you're already in the building, but there are no windows or doors to the outside. Ammunition can be found on one of the counters. The garage corridor is outfitted with fine plywood panelling, and the garage itself has a westward facing window and a southward facing door, also made from the finest plywood. The corridor features solid walls with large open doorways both to the left and right. The CCTV camera covers the length of the hallway, but only if you actually move it left or right. At the end of the corridor you will see a large set of double doors leading out to the children's play area, and to the left you have the TV room. This room includes some cover as well as a window to the north and an escape hatch to the basement. Now let me show you the dining room, which can be accessed through a wall panel from the outside. I've got this one guys. Um, what was that crunching sound? Oh, you've, you've already done it. Okay, okay fine. It's not really as if I wanted to use my cool explosives, or at least wait for me to retrieve it. Or, or don't, of course. Oh well, back to the tour I guess. May I present to you the dining room. This room is a defender's dream. The only way in from the outside is through the wall we just came through, and the only other breachable wall is that to the north. With a few well-placed wall reinforcements, the only thing you have to worry about is the ceiling hatch leading to the kids' bedroom. And even if attackers do make it into the dining room, there is plenty of waist-high cover to hide behind. Next up, our last stop on this floor, the piano lounge. Great for entertaining guests and providing excellent cover, this room can only be accessed from the outside through a small window in the north, and of course there is the breachable wall to the south. And last but not least, let me show you the basement. Being underground means that there is only limited access to the basement from the outside. There are no windows and there is only a single door, but alternatively there are also two walls that you can break through. To get to these breach points you can use the outdoor stairs, or if you're already in the building you can come down the internal stairway to the south. From the garage you can take a ladder down to the maintenance area. As always, the coolest way to enter the basement is through the ceiling. You can do this in the corner of the armory, or the maintenance area. Ammunition can be found in the armory, and look out for the defensive camera in the northeast of the lockers area. And if you'll follow the man in the beige beret, we'll now show you the basement. When making your way down from the garage, you can use the ladder, but you can also jump. Just make sure to bend your knees when landing. The maintenance area cannot be accessed from the outside, and apart from the two doors and the ladder, there is only a small part of breachable wall to the north, and a breachable ceiling hatch coming down from the kitchen. The room is partially dissected by a piece of solid wall that can provide great cover from the doorway to the north. So overall, this is quite a defensible room, as long as you don't get enemies jumping down on you from the kitchen above. And now it's time to move on. If you'll kindly follow me, I will show you the armory. Ah, and I see one of you has a question. I did make it very clear that questions will not be tolerated. But back to the armory. This room is a prepper's dream. You will find ammunition in the center of the room and plenty of cover to hide behind. Just take care over the breachable walls to the east and south and the breachable ceiling panel in the northwest. Heading back out into the hallway, let me show you the lockers area. This area is the most vulnerable to being breached from the outside through a wall both in the east and in the north. Both the southern wall leading to the briefing room and the western wall leading into the armory can also be breached. The camera can be found in the northeastern corner of this area. The lockers themselves not only provide great storage space for all that junk you should have thrown away years ago, they're also great at providing cover from enemy fire. And last but not least, let me show you the briefing room. Perfect for family interventions, this small meeting space is also quite defensible. Apart from the soft wall in the north, there are only doorways heading east to the outside and west to the hallway. So this building can make the perfect home for you and your family, as long as you don't mind the occasional sound of breaching charges, grenades and gunfire. Register your interest in this property today by clicking the like button below. And with that, all that remains to be said is I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.